the 5th Wiltshires had been ordered to resume their advance to attack the bridge they had failed to take the previous day. The events of the next few hours were to determine the final outcome of the battle. We reformed into two companies that all we got strength for. We did have the support of a number of sappers, I remember, because of the um, mines, and of course we had the support of the 13th, 18th Hussars. They were splendid chaps in that they seemed to be prepared to lead us into battle, and there's not every tank squadron was prepared to do that. What with the mist and one thing and another, the start attack was delayed, I think, till about 2 o'clock, maybe 2.30. <coughs> and it started with the um, usual artillery barrage. It was uh, very sticky going, and the infantry was suffering a lot of casualties. We got to the bridge across a stream, and it was necessary to go across this at the base of the mountain, and the 5th Wiltshires were the infantry with us, and they put a company through and to try and approach the bridge. They got to the approaches of the bridge and all of a sudden came under fire from machine guns from about four or five different directions. The result was that the infantry had to go to ground and their attack was stopped. The bridge across the stream, which had to be got across, was mined. They put their pioneers in to clear the mines and it took them something in the region of about half an hour, under which they were, they were under fire at the same time. Eventually they got the bridge cleared, and we went across one troop of our, our tanks uh, ahead of the infantry, and got across to the other side, and we're now at the base of the mountain, the other side of the stream. The infantry company then got up to storm the bridge to go across, and they'd got about halfway when the enemy came to life, again with mortars and machine guns, and the leading company was practically wiped out. I was in uh, front battalion headquarters with the CO and the wireless setback brigade, and um, the message came back that the leading troops were held up, couldn't get across the stream or across the bridge. Well, um, Pop Pearson, immediately stepped out to go forward and I can remember the last thing I said to him was for God's sake take care of yourself Pop and he I can still remember the way he looked at me and said you take care of yourself Harry. And of course he, he no more said when they made no progress that he was going to go forward and we were to stop where we were and I, he jumped out of the carrier and away he went and of course we didn't see him again until and sadly, he no sooner got to the bridge than he was shot by a sniper from a tree, which was quickly avenged by Corporal McCrell, who seen the sp spot and um, riddled it with sten guns, and the German sniper's body fell out of the tree. I found out about that later, of course. The first thing I knew was that um, Desmond Keeling came, the intelligence officer who got poor with Pop, came running back with the um, one of the company commanders, Bill Field, and said, look, you know, Fidito, there's no, no way forward. I got on to brigade and said that um, we would attempt a limited objective of the crossroads at Viridia and uh, we did at least have a better idea where some of the enemy opposition was coming from. So um, we were able to lay on um, a revised fire plan, which instead of just being a generalized barrage, was um, more likely to hit where you wanted it to hit. We were supporting the Fifth Wilts. Uh, 468 battery. It was all on the the woody slopes that we were firing because they were being held up with, um, as I say, with machine guns and spandos and and I don't think they had any ta uh, SPs dug in on the side, but it was hell of a lot of machine guns dug in there. 